Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna to be testing out a brand new foundation. This is the new Faux Filter Foundation from Huda Beauty. For this video, I'm gonna be doing a test of the foundation, how it applies to the skin, how I feel like it looks. I am wearing the foundation right now, but you guys will see like the step-by-step -step of me applying it, how it reacts with some of my go-to products. And then I'm also gonna be checking in throughout the day just to give you like an update on how it's wearing, how it's holding up. There are 30 total shades of this foundation range. So it's beige, new neutral, golden, and red undertones. This is a medium to full coverage foundation. You can get a medium coverage with it or you can get a full coverage depending on how you apply it. And there is also the Complexion Perfection Pre Makeup Base, which is the primer for the foundation. So the skin type, it says it's good for normal, dry, combination, or oily skin. So pretty much all skin types. I'm more on the dry to normal side. And then the finish, I was kind of confused because on the Sephora website, it says the finish is satin, matte, radiant, and natural. It says it's all of them. So I was like, wait, what? <laughs> you can't just check off all the boxes just because you want to. But then when I used it, I kind of got a feel for like, okay, it does have kind of a matte finish. I don't want to say matte because the last, few found the last foundation I used was like super matte, but it has kind of a more matte finish. I would just say it's more of a natural finish myself, but it is somewhat down the middle of the road. So if you like super matte or if you like super luminous, this is just kind of something in the middle. All right, I'm gonna quit yapping now and we're gonna get to the application. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start out with the primer. This is the Huda Beauty Complexion Perfection Pre-Makeup Base. That's what they're calling it, not a primer, but you know, primer is a pre-makeup base. So this is a hydrating makeup base that creates a smooth canvas while gripping makeup and moisturizing the skin. So as I read the description for this, it really seems like it is a hydrating, nourishing, prep your skin type of primer. This has rosehip oil and dimethicone, which is supposed to help with moisturizing. And it says it can also be used as a lightweight moisturizer to leave skin soft and nourished without feeling oily. That's something that I've noticed with primers that say they're nourishing. Sometimes it makes me feel oily throughout the day and my skin type is more on the normal to dry side. I would say once I start putting thicker products on my skin, my skin starts looking really, really dry. Any type of stick concealer or really thick concealer, you can really see on my skin. So that's why I say I lean more towards the dry side. So the packaging is a pump application and I thought my pump was broken at first because I, I had to pump it for like three minutes straight before it started coming out. There is a scent in here. It does have kind of like a florally, fragranty scent that I feel like I, I could do without, but the texture of it's really nice. It feels like a thicker, creamier moisturizer. And my skin has been, I don't wanna say it's been like playing me, but it's been a little bit like uh, bumpy the past week, not like big breakouts, but this like whole side of my face, I don't even, I was like, is this like an allergic reaction or something? Cause it's just been like kind of weird. All right, so as I'm putting this on my skin, it does feel pretty thick like a heavy duty kind of creamy, like a gel cream type feeling. And I'm wondering like, all right, are you gonna go in? Are you gonna set into my face? So as of right now, it feels really good on my under eyes cause I'm very dry right here. But the rest of my face, I'm kind of like, ah. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start the foundation now. I don't know if this is going to like fully absorb or dry into the skin. It does smell kind of strong. I'm thinking it's that rose hip scent, but we will see. All right, so now we have the foundation. Huda Beauty reached out to me and had me fill out like a little survey to see which shade I would be. And the two shades that they sent me are uh, Cheesecake, which is 250G, which is light skin with a golden undertone. And then I also have Amoretti, which is 310G, which is medium skin with a golden undertone. I typically lean towards golden undertones because my skin is more olive. Like whenever I put neutral undertone on my skin, my skin looks like green next to it. So that's why I typically go towards golden, but I would still prefer to have an olive undertone foundation. That's something that's kind of hard to find because if I go neutral, it looks pink on me. And if I go golden, it looks like a little bit too yellow on me. So I'm definitely more olive. I'll do the shoulder test. I'm pretty fair right now, but this is Amoretti. And this stuff is like really full coverage. Like, look at this. Whoa, I put way too much out. A whole pump covers a lot. I don't know, where do you guys swatch your foundations? I mean, I always sw swatch it on my hand or my arm, but when I do like the ultimate test, I do it on my shoulder. And here's the cheesecake color. So I feel like cheesecake is gonna end up being too light, but I think Amoretti is gonna end up being a little bit too tan, possibly a little bit too golden on me. Should I mix them? 
the, that's the hard part when you have like a really full coverage foundation is if it's not like a really good shade for you, it's gonna show up a lot on your face. So you wanna make sure you have like the best match possible. So it's a full coverage foundation, but if you wanna have a lighter coverage, you can use a damp beauty blender. If you want fuller coverage, it suggests that you use the brush that it comes with, which is very similar to like a flat top kabuki type of brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and try it with the brush because I feel like that's the, the suggested use for it. But if you know me, I would probably end up using a damp beauty blender just to get a little bit less coverage, a little bit more minimal. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and try Amoretti and put a, just a drop of cheesecake in it, especially if it oxidizes at all. I think Amoretti is gonna end up being a little bit too dark for me, but the texture of this foundation, it is a little, like a little bit thicker than foundations that I'm used to. So I typically use more like luminous, medium coverage. This one's Definitely a fuller coverage foundation than what I typically use. All right, so here's the concoction that I made. This is Amoretti with one drop of cheesecake in it. Just that way I can kind of make like a custom shade. I mixed it with my finger because that's how I roll. Oh, I didn't even put my under eye concealer on yet. Let me do that real quick. Put a little bit of my under eye concealer on in here. I typically do not bring foundations like all the way up to my under eye area, but I'm gonna go ahead and try and bring the foundation just right up to this area and see how well it covers my under eye hyperpigmentation that I have. I'm just gonna use this excess that I have on my finger and throw it on here. And this is the Face Buff and Blend brush, which is a kind of like a flat top kabuki brush. So as I'm putting this on, I'm just like, wow, this is full coverage. This right here is full coverage. I still can smell that primer. See, I'm, I'm kind of more sensitive to smells like that. So if you don't care about that, then whatever. But to me, I'm like, I can still smell it. It kind of smells like old. You know what I mean? Like, you know that smell like your grandma's wearing a perfume. That's kind of like the vibe I'm getting right now. I mean, I guess if that's your jam, then that's your jam, you know? And I feel like the brush isn't really letting me like buff. Like, I feel like it's kind of sticking to my face if that makes sense. So I'm gonna come back in and mix a little bit more of the cheesecake color to lighten it up a bit more, but it's giving pretty good coverage. I feel like this brush is working better for me if I just stipple it as opposed to buffing, but it looks like really good on camera. I feel like the color looks good, the finish looks good. It doesn't look overly matte on me, which I like. I was a little bit confused when it said the foundation finish was like, it's like a matte foundation, but it has a natural satin finish. I was like, what? <laughs> But I kind of get it now, it makes sense. It's definitely got a little bit of a sheen to it. I'm having a hard time around these brows, not looking like I have brick brows going on. All right, so here we have a zoom in close up of the foundation on the skin before I start doing highlighting and the rest of my face. So I like that there's a little bit of a sheen to the skin. Like I said, I got some more texture going on than normal, especially in I'm like, especially in this area, like my whole face. But it looks pretty good on this side. I like the finish of it so far. Now I'll go ahead and start doing the rest of my face. We'll see how like my shape tape and whatnot reacts to this foundation. So what I like about this foundation so far is I feel like it could go great with people with oily skin and people with drier skin. It's like weird how it has kind of a matte finish, but it still has a sheen to it. Like I can see that when I look in the mirror and when I look on the monitor. Like I feel like my skin doesn't look powdered which is something that I like. All right, so now I'm going to conceal, set the under eyes, and move on with my life. Finish my face up. So I'm gonna be using the Tarte Shape Tape in the shade Light Medium. I feel like I can start using like a little bit lighter shade of this as well. Light Sand or Light Neutral. Maybe I'll try Light Neutral. I feel like Light Sand is like hella light. Hold on. Yeah, maybe I'll start using this one. Light Neutral. How are you guys liking the ColourPop concealer? I'm curious to who's using it full time. I need to like go back and reinvestigate ColourPop. Honestly, all I can think about right now is how stinky my face is. <laughs> like I smell it. Like you know how when you wear Mac Studio Fix, I'm pretty sure I didn't like it when I first started wearing it, but then like I got used to it and then I just started really liking the smell of a Mac store. Some of you guys probably think I have a really sensitive nose because I said the same thing about the Too Faced collection, but that one literally smelled like peaches, so I don't wanna hear it. All right, coming in with my RCMA No Color Powder. I'm like, do I put the Beauty Blender in my contact lenses? Cause I can't see for like a good 30 seconds after I do that to my under eyes, so. I don't know if you guys can hear this. 
This brush is like actually falling apart right now. I'm kind of sad. All right, so everything's going nicely here. Nothing weird is happening. Nothing's separating. Nothing's lifting off of my face. This foundation is called Faux Filter Foundation. So it said I won't need or want a filter, which we'll see if this puts like a flower crown on my head. Maybe then I will believe it. But until then, it's pushing it for me. A little bit of highlighter. This is Fuego, by the way. All right, what do you guys think? Laura Geller Sunswept or Flower Peach Primrose? I'm gonna go ahead and go Sunswept. I love these Laura Geller blushes. They are like a baked product, which I typically am not crazy about, but there's something about these, probably because they got some like bronziness going on in them that just, they really get me going. All right, so let's... They can be like very pigmented though, like dangerously. Pigmented. I don't know. I'm kind of liking this foundation. No, like, see, like when I when I turn, there's a slight sheen right there, like on the forehead. Is it the primer or just the foundation by itself? Honestly, I think if I if I wear this foundation again, I don't think I can do the primer. It was just like a little bit too heavy for me. It was a little bit too much. I want to tell it to fall back. I don't know why I'm still tapping my blush, but. All right, I've heard many great things about this bronzer. This is the Marc Jacobs Tantastic number 104. Let's give it a shot. Let's see how we're feeling about it. Seems good to me. Nice little wash of bronzer. I'm liking my face right now. I'm liking the way things are going. I'm gonna do a little bit of the nose contour that I do, which is just right here, right in the socket my favorite place to contour on my entire face. And I'm just, I'm using my NARS Laguna cause it's like right here. So any type of bronzer or contour color that's not too dark or too warm is what I like to use in this area. Let's set with some Fix Plus. I feel like it's looking really good. So far I am really, really liking it. Like it looks natural. It doesn't look too heavy, but it also covered a lot, which I think is like incredible. And since I didn't even use the beauty blender to apply it, and I think if I use the beauty blender, I would probably like it even more. All right, so to finish up my makeup, I'm gonna go with a lip. This is a lipstick I've worn quite a few times. This is the Too Faced Sunday Fun Day Lipstick. This one right here. It's kind of like a mauve nude lipstick. So I already, Line my lips with a little bit of Strip Down from MAC. It's like one of those lipsticks where it's just like a step darker than my lips, you know? And then I'm gonna finish it off with the e.l.f. This is a new product actually that I'm excited about. Their collaboration that they did with Alyssa Ashley. So Alyssa is like an incredible, incredible makeup artist. She has amazing videos. If you guys don't subscribe to her channel, you need to get it together. The shade that she made is called Nude Rose and it is a lip gloss from e.l.f. So I'm gonna wear this on top of my lipstick. This is a really nice formula of lip gloss. Congratulations, Alyssa, this is amazing. I love the color, it's perfection, and it's not like a sticky lip gloss, which is really, really nice, and it's very juicy, as you can tell. The lipstick that I was wearing was like a satiny, like satin matte kind of finish, and this just made it super glossy, so. I'm here for it. Any type of gloss, you know I'm there for it. So I love this color. I think it's so pretty. As far as the foundation goes, as of right now, right now, I really like it. I feel like on all the higher points on my face, you can still see a little bit of a sheen in it, which is what I like. You know, everybody knows I don't love matte foundations that much. That's because I kind of have drier skin. So if it's too matte, it's just gonna make me look super, and it's gonna make me feel dry. Not only that, I just feel too dry if something is too matte and powdery looking on my skin. So I honestly thought this foundation was gonna be too matte for me. I thought maybe it would make me look powdery, but so far I'm like really liking the finish of it. I think it looks really good. I feel like I was able to create a color that went with my skin. Unfortunately, I had to blend two different shades to get a color that I feel like I really liked. I'm probably gonna go into a Sephora and swatch some more shades. If it goes with me, maybe I should switch to neutral undertone instead of golden. But you know, every brand is different. It's really hard to tell what undertone you're gonna go with until you see it in person. And I can't tell you, I probably will not be using the brush to apply the foundation again. I felt like it just kind of like stuck to my face. I couldn't really buff it. I felt like it was more of like a stippling thing. And at that point, I just think I would rather use a beauty blender. It reacted with all the products that I typically wear very well, like my under eye concealer, that's looking good so far, but I will check in 
later on in the day, show you guys how it's holding up. So I'm not saying goodbye, but see you later. All right guys, I'm checking back in on the foundation. It's been almost two hours since I first put it on and I'm still, look at this coverage. I feel like it looks really good. I'm still liking it. It feels good on my face. I'm having one problem, which is the scent. It's very strong. You know how sometimes you're like, all right, it smells. It's got a strong fragrance, but it's gonna go away or I'm gonna get used to it. One of the two has to happen. Hasn't happened yet. I feel like I'm wearing perfume. Like it kind of reminds me of like old school Estee Lauder perfume or something. I don't ever like getting the phone that close to my face, but I feel like it still looks really good. So I'll keep you guys posted. I'll check back in a little bit. Right, I'm checking back in again on the foundation. It's been a few hours since my last check-in. Uh, my lip color has come off, but I feel like the foundation still looks pretty good. It stayed pretty like non-oily, which is surprising. Normally like right here is where I get like, you know, pretty oily. Um, it looks pretty good still. The only thing that I did notice, oh, by the way, the smell has dissipated. It's not the first thing I'm talking about. So the smell has gone away. Though right here, it does still feel like a little bit tacky on my finger. Like if I push down, it feels like it didn't really set. Everything's still looking good. I'll check back in again before I take my makeup off to go to sleep. Okay, I'm doing my last check-in for the night. It's really late. It's like 11 o'clock right now. Uh, I'm about to take my makeup off and go to bed, but I wanted to check in one more time um, on the foundation. I already took my lashes off and I've been like rubbing my eyes, so I'm super expired right now. <laughs> But the foundation still looks really good. Right now as I'm looking in my phone, the shade looks really nice. When I look in my mirror in this lighting in here, it looks like it might've gotten like a touch warmer. I don't know if the foundation oxidized or if I just feel a little bit warmer because it's dark outside and I have my lights on right now. So I'm gonna have to keep testing that as far as the color goes. But earlier when I checked in, it didn't feel like it got darker or that it oxidized. So it might just be my lighting right now. But the foundation wore great throughout the day. This area right here and in like the laugh lines, I've also been laughing a lot for the past hour. Um, it feels like some of the foundation might have settled into those finer lines a little bit more than other foundations do. That could be because it's fuller coverage. Oh my God, I'm like dripping everywhere. For sure, be testing out this foundation again, um, giving it another whirl, testing it out throughout the day. It does still feel a little bit tacky on the side. So it doesn't feel like it ever fully set or dried. Hi, Tur. You wanna come hang out? What are you doing? Anyway, that is my final check-in of the day. I'm gonna go take my makeup off and go to bed, but I will be giving this foundation another shot for sure. For sure, I'm gonna try it with a different primer though. I'm still set on that. All right, so that wraps up my Huda Beauty first impression and all day wear test of the Faux Filter Foundation. Let me know what you guys thought, if you're gonna be trying out this foundation or if you already have it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. Do I still need a filter? Actually, it looks pretty damn good, I'm not gonna lie. Keep doing this, I don't know why I keep doing that. No filter, I'm okay with it. We, we need you. Excuse me, please. I would still like to have, you know, hearts or flowers or a crown around my head, but I will accept this. Thank you. I mean, but what are you gonna do? Uh <laughs>